Hello and welcome back to Under Pressure's Junior Draft Jamboree. I am Weef, joined here by the wonderful Toma, and we are bringing you round four of Swiss here with Teenage Mutant Ninja Squids versus Lethal Law. Uh, and aren't we all Teenage Mutant Ninja Squids in this world? Yeah, we definitely all are, you know. A little fun spot that Steven had in Splatoon 2 where we all gotta be those for, you know, for three times. Three times, I believe, if I recall correctly. <laughs> uh, but getting into this Junior's Draft team, I'm gonna uh, click a few buttons here. I am, uh, I'm currently being very blind and can't read. Okay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Squids, here we go. So um, this is a team that played in the Drizzle Season 2023 event, and they only competed competitively in Junior's Draft. They have subbed like for a few things, but generally this is still just a Junior's Draft level team, not really doing too much outside here on the side though of lethal law looking into them they were also in that drizzle season 2023 and they were actually playing in little squid league 33 together so they have done a little bit more outside of this to kind of put their names on the, the charts here yeah and what a good jumping point off uh, that both of those events are lsl what, a, what an absolute classic. But I do believe that both of these teams probably have a similar amount of experience, so uh, that's going to be uh, pretty exciting to go on to, as we uh, as we see. Uh, we've had a lot of really close matches, and I predict this one is going to be another one. Yeah, we have had so many close, so many fun matches here today. We, I doubt this is going to be any different here. Going to be seeing what we're going into uh, on this round, and it's going to be starting off on Splat Zones, Mako Mart. What a classic, classic stage to begin on. Lots of fun ledges, lots of fun terrain to play around, but it's also just ultimately a really balanced map that I think brings out a lot of cool weapon diversity. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, the, the sloshers, they, those girls, they, they thrive. We got uh, like anything with the AOE that can really affect things on those stacks. Anything that can shark under those ledges, those are always really good. I, I know I always personally hate nothing more than carbon sharking under that right drop. That's the that's a quick way to infuriate me <laughs> in my in my backline uh, in my backline ness. Yeah, I agree with you there, and it's going to be cool to see what's going on here as they load out. We see the uh, Splatana, which is just an excellent pick for poking under the ledges, along with that Flingza Roller as well. And I'm interested to see, we got these um, Tetras that are going to be going out, of course. You know, Tetras are really good at that kind of zone change, and they're really aggressive, but nothing really on the side of Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja Squids that is kind of a ledge campy weapon, not as much to really work with the kind of terrain that this map has. What they are doing though is they're doing a very good job of sawing out those and as Explode goes on a flank on their stack, they are able to maintain a flank here, but I believe that's going to be that Stamper getting the pick on either before do going down themselves as Kiri over here is going to be pushing forward, trying to get uh, picks at which they do onto this zone. Uh, they have the Reef Slider at the ready. They're going to camp this jump and do a lot of work at maintaining the zone for their team, uh, especially as they get that not quite get that third pick there, but uh, they still buy Team Ninja Squid's time to take the lead back. Yeah, and that's going to be really important for them right now, and especially in getting that E-Leader set up, because, you know, who needs to deal with, you know, the curvature of this map and the stacks and whatnot if you've just got an E-Leader set up that doesn't have to deal with poking around all this cover. And right now they're doing a great job, but it does look like Lethal Law is going to eventually be able to flip that zone. This E-Leader smartly backing up say like hey I don't I don't want to be up there right now it's kind of a little bit unsafe which is absolutely the right call but ninja or er, squid wasting no time and getting back in here to retake that zone but you've got to pay attention splatter there on that right hand side popping those missiles out here already took out one gonna be looking to see if they can find any more how much chaos they can just cause and they're able to find one right here in the bubble just as you fall down just like hey I'm here too Normally you see Flingzas play back and play entirely around their missiles, not really using the potential that the main weapon has uh, for long range poke, but also for that really fast short range kill. But uh, Splatter over here is using the weapon to their full advantage going forward, getting picks, uh, doing some sharking and all that. All the stuff that normal rollers do, but with the added benefit of a good support special and a really good long range train ability. And so we're going to see Exode come in here, try get distracted a little bit by a jump in, but does end up getting the pick. Gets 
too goes behind and is going to destroy this uh, bubble and buy a lot of room for their team as Lethal Law continues to take down that timer, uh, really putting the fire under Team Mutant Ninja Squid's uh, feet or perhaps tentacles as we uh, rapidly approach a f only about 10 seconds left in this game. They're going to dodge onto the zone, try to do anything that they can to paint it, but Kira gets taken out from behind, two seconds left on the zone, and that's going to be Lethal Law taking game one. Yeah, what a huge, huge victory there. They just had that, like you said, kind of fire under them uh, the entire time on Ninja uh, ninja Squids, which is I mean, it's kind of what you expect when you're running, you know, a leader into that kind of very aggressive stamper that has Zipcaster, missiles on the flings of it. It's, it's two specials that if you are an E-leader, you are crying whenever you load into a match scene because I'm I'm there. I'm, I've been the leader player. I know Respect. how it feels. <laughs> Um, but it just so much displacement, so much ability on the side of Lethal Law to kind of disrupt the flow of Ninja Squid's defense. And it really worked out very well for them. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, no, the, that poor leader player, they didn't really have the tools to deal with the aggression that uh, Lethal Law was able to bring, and their their backline, backless comp still had plenty of tools. You know, if they start getting pushed back, that uh, that flames, they could start using their long range mode, play some mines, get some missiles, put and get ready to push them back out, but just not a lot of tools for aggression on the side of Teenage Mutant Ninja Squid. So we're going to see if they make any adjustments as we move on to map 2, which is going to be Tower Control on Ship Shape Cargo Go. Yep, it definitely is going to be. I mean, this is this is another, like we said, new map, but we saw it before in uh, Zones. Now we're going to be seeing it in Tower Control. This is one that, you know, not as unanimously loved. Uh, I still think it's a really, really good map, but the thing about it, right, there's so much you got to look out for. There is, when you're approaching that uh, first checkpoint, you're right up against the pit. Anybody can just squid surge up that wall at you if you're not expecting it, if you're not keeping track of where people are. But then even more importantly is that second checkpoint is going to be right above all of this defensive high ground weave. They have all the safe place in the air or in the world to just be able to rain everything they've got down at that tower to be able to defend. And you've really got to find the way to make that jump across or push forward through that choke and just make sure that they can't set up on that defensive high ground. And you got to flush it out, whether it be specials, whether it be a skirmisher, whatever you can, to really be able to reliably clear that checkpoint. And that's really where you see games made or broken. Now, we don't see any adjustments on the side of Teen Mutant Ninja Squids, but Lethal Law is opting to bring out something a little bit different, bringing out the Luna Blaster as well as they have that Stamper still, so they're bringing out the double Zipcaster to really make that uh, E-Looter kind of cry in fear, um, as well as the Heavy Edit, which is going to provide a lot of good mid-range pressure, as well as the cooler that is ever so critical in this meta, and the 52 guy is of course the ribbon on top or the uh, the cherry on top or perhaps uh, you know you know what I mean so we are gonna see lethal uh, have a pretty good first push here not quite able to break that checkpoint but they're still there ready to go the uh, stamper has that zip caster at the ready and is still holding but that leader is trying to stare them down as best they can trying to intimidate them to maybe hoping to back off but once again like we said uh, this uh, stamper wants blood the stamper wants that you either or anyone really who's starting near the tower they are in a recall without much done and to get taken down which is going to lead Teeny Shoot Ninja Squids to getting a bit of control back in their own area. Definitely right here you see Teenage Mutant Ninja Squids just trying to bike for control of this mid area. Going to be getting that nice reef slider out, trying to find a pig, does find one, maybe finds two, potentially finds three. They're going to be huge for Ninja Squids to really start getting this ball rolling. The first checkpoint hasn't been cleared on either side, so this is definitely their opportunity to be able to grab this lead, but they've got to be careful with that Junior there who's just out here battling, battle Junior life out there. And now does that buy our bot enough time for the Splatana to be able to come in and finish it up. Excellently played there from that junior to just uh, stay alive uh, and take those fights in really aggressive ways that you don't always expect junior players to be doing. Um, yeah, we're, we're seeing here, that was pretty scary for Le Lethal Law, but they still ended up maintaining the lead. Now I we are- I think that was a junior, I just realized. I'm so sorry, I think that was a Luna Blaster. I just saw a big yeah. white thing in its hand. Listen, I am so smart today, I've been up since 5 a.m. My apologies for interrupting, I just had a, I was like, wait, I was, what was I just saying? I was stretching my chin a little bit, but I wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna bring it down like that. However, we are gonna see uh, this 
bubble going out, which is going to buy uh, some really good defense here for Team Mutant Ninja Squids here at this checkpoint, which they are readily taking down through, and they are going to take the lead off of this too. Lethal Law is uh, a little bit down. The numbers advantage is typically slowly tipping in the way of Team Mutant Ninja Squids, which is going to lead them to getting below that 50 point mark, starting to get some good picks from that leader who is going to move a little bit in and then decide to back off, but not before the Luna gets to him. No, no, that Luna, now, you know, it, okay, now the Luna, the, the white weapon making, playing aggressively there, in their hand, now it makes sense. Yeah, juniors don't play aggressively. A Luna Blaster, yeah, it will. It will jump on the tower. It'll shoot you point blank. It'll do everything you can. Um, just, <laughs> maybe maybe look at the, at the HUD, Toma, and we'll realize what's going on a little bit better. But that makes total sense. A great play there. And now you see this zip caster coming out, doing a great job here. The stamper just trying to put pressure out. Finds uh, there's two down on the side of Ninja Squids. And as they try to just keep going towards that tower, you've still got this Luna and the stamper combo to keep them far away. But these bombs and just chip damage potential that they've got is going absolutely crazy as they find a two, potentially three. There we go. There's the third down. And this may be finally the checkpoint break that they've needed. They just need to get this space here clear. They've got one zip caster out. They may have another zip caster out here in just a minute as the stamper's got it potentially ready to go. Maybe saving it for this second checkpoint. As I said, this is kind of the point where things flip a lot, but no, two are gonna go down. Just this Luna Blaster left alive. One does jump in, two do jump in, but they're probably dead on arrival there. I say is that, but no, the 52 actually gonna take a crazy fight there, stay alive, gonna ride the tower for just a little bit longer before finally going down. 52 still in this game being the pinnacle of survivability with that main weapon with the wall. Everything about it kind of leads to it being just a pain in the, uh, just an absolute pain to get out uh, once it gets set up and everything. So, uh, so we are gonna see, uh, a really, it's starting to get desperate here because it's a very uh, winnable lead here that Team Trinity Squids could have the chance to take back, but Lethal Law is gonna keep trying to keep pushing forward because if you're pushing, the other team can't. The further you get this tower into their territory, as soon as the overtime uh, clock strikes, the more difficult it is to be for them to beat their lead. So we are going to see them just keep trying to push in, but they also are going to uh, force themselves into a bit of a numbers advantage. The heavy end is going to pop out their uh, their cooler here. However, they're going to get really forced out by this uh, by the Setchers, who is going to eventually get the pick on them, and they're not really in a huge spot to defend here. Uh, but uh, that is going to be game over as the E-Leader is left alone on tower and the 52 brushes in and takes the game. Yeah, and Lethal Law there just doing an excellent job getting that forward pressure, especially with that combination that they had with the, not a junior, but a Luna Blaster plus the Stamper combination to just kind of chip down, you know, zone out their enemies from being able to approach them. Did a really good job there here. We kind of see the conclusion of this game going on, and you see that the tower is going slowly in control of Lethal Law, and as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Squid starts to gain some some control once again you know it just ultimately isn't gonna work out for them there as this fight uh you know pushes lethal law back but with the you know numbers that they had coming back in they got this cooler online i don't know how this splatling survived for this long but they were distracting that tetra from everything else going on which really just allowed the rest of the members to come in pick off those fights that the splatling couldn't finish and wrap up that game which is huge for them there is one game left here in this set but that does buy the three one uh you know record for Lethal Law. That's going to be putting them over um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Squids, who's now going to be 2-2, two, two, and it'll probably place them in different brackets going forward for the rest of the event. Yeah, sorry, I just got uh, very <laughs> distracted. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder what's going on that might be a little... A little bit, you know, got our attention going on. I don't uh, think I don't think the stream can see it yet. <laughs> okay, they not. That's really funny. Well, I guess they'll see momentarily then. But yeah, regardless, it's it's uh, one of the last chances for uh, Teenage Mutant Squids to take the game as they do go to Rainmaker Undertow, which is a very um, interesting map mode in all cases. Uh, either super explosive or super stally. It's interesting push routes and we do see the tetras end up switching off onto uh so the what are those the dapple new bows 
which is interesting. And we see uh, the vanilla jet also come out, which means that Lethal Law is going to be running a very long range comp here. Yeah, 100%. Now they're moving forward, or trying to grab that Rainmaker. I say moving forward, but they pull it back almost immediately, just trying to make sure that they don't go down. But this is exactly what they're going to do early on. And that's kind of the thing is with these really early Rainmaker grabs is sometimes you're just going to go down pretty fast. Uh, the Stamper, though, does find a nice pick in that bubble before it is able to fully come out. But again, Lethal Law really needs to kind of watch their backside. They're kind of just getting picked off right as they're able to get these Rainmaker picks playing it maybe a little too fast right now. There's no need to rush this. They have time to find some picks. It's very early on in the game. So just need to play it a little bit more patiently because now the third time within, you know, one minute of the game starting that they've gone down after picking up that Rainmaker. And uh, the jet goes out for blood here, getting a beautiful pick on that leader, which cascades into them getting a three down, which uh, looks like they might opt to go for that right side as they get uh, it pretty much entirely cleared off, which is always a gamble, which it looks like is a gamble that they're going to lose this time around, but they did buy themselves uh, quite a few points, and it's fun. Uh, it's not certainly over as x over here is going to get a pick with that Zipcaster, which means they are going to make through the checkpoint. The back is coming out, uh, the Zinni gets picked off, and it looks like they could potentially go for a few more points, uh, which is what they're going to do right here. Yeah, huge, huge pick there. Uh, unfortunately, not really able to work it up that ramp there. And this is kind of, this is the harder route to go, Weave. Uh, it's way more exposed. You've got this giant uninkable ramp, uh, but it does add up points faster. But you see there, it was really hard for them to make any sort of push any further. So Splatter instead picking it up, going this left-hand side, is a little bit safer. It is a slower route. It's going to earn points slower but it is a lot safer to move through they're able to pick up one point there but they're in a great position to be able to pick this rainmaker back up and get a few more points out the leader is going to be looking at them though trying to advance this rainmaker trying to get the pick the leader misses the reef slider doesn't find its target they're able to push it down all the way to seven just the dapples left up there is the full wipe and we we may be seeing the set come to a close as that vac is going to protect the rainmaker dunk lethal law gonna be taking the set three to zero yeah, no, TG Ninja Squid just never really had a chance to push there because Lethal Law just kept up the aggression throughout the entire time, which is, you know, a really good way to play Rainmaker. Um, once again, if you're pushing, the enemy isn't. If you have that chance to get more points, why would you not go for it here? Um, even at that last second when they got the Rainmaker got picked off and it went all the way down to seven, even if they weren't in the position to push again, that would still be something to be absolutely proud of and absolutely just ready to kind of sit back and enjoy the rest of the game as you just need to focus on defense but they just kept on going made sure that they uh, got that ko and the game was over right then and there sealing the deal with a vacuum yeah absolutely great use of that special to wrap that up you see right here as it kind of all comes to an end they find that final pick right as they recall too and just to make it safe it's like hey they're respawning. They're probably not going to even be able to shoot me, even if we had nothing out. But the vac is that we're just going to do it to be extra, extra safe. But huge congrats to Lethal Law setting themselves up for a good bracket run there at that 3 1 uh, record within the Swiss groups. But that being said, we if it, that does mean that our Swiss stage is coming to a conclusion here. And unfortunately, that does mean that it is time for us to head out. We've got two great commentators ready to follow up after us but before we go we've where can the great people find you I was going to say, unfortunately, like, uh, that should be something you should be excited for. But you can find me on Twitter and uh, Blue Sky at uh, Weef Slider or Weef, depending on the platform. Uh, but Toma, where can the lovely, lovely folks find you? Yeah, it, they can find me at Twitter at Chris Degatier here at Twitch at T Toma underscore. But that being said, you know, love, I always love being on mic with you, Weef. It is so much fun and so sad that it has to come to an end, but you've got great great people coming up i believe it's uh, vic and skep coming up oh, yeah. next two, two great <laughs> friends of mine i am so excited to hear what they're cooking up for this amazing alpha bracket run that'll be going on so stay tuned you've got some great teams some great commentators and we are gonna have a wonderful rest of the stream see ya